Hello, it's Tim Spector here of the Zoe COVID Symptom Study app. Our update on progress against the virus this week is more good news as we're hearing good news about the vaccines having reached 10 million vaccinations. We're also continuing to see a reduction in the new cases of symptomatic COVID. Uh, the daily rate is down to 21,000, which is down, if you remember, from a peak or at the beginning of January of around 70,000. So that's about a 70% improvement. Uh, there's still plenty of cases around, uh, but uh, this trend is continuing around the country and uh, in most regions, we're seeing drops. There are a few exceptions in a small, few small areas where there will be big outbreaks, which is to be expected. So uh, this is generally good news. And I think this has started to be reflected in the uh, reduced hospital admissions around the country, uh, particularly in London, where the uh, main burden of uh, this, uh, this wave occurred. And we're seeing hospital occupancies down to the 20 to 40 percent range and before they were really in the 30 to 60 percent. Um, so hospital emissions are down. Deaths not yet um, haven't really changed. And this is probably because the peak in uh, the more elderly population wasn't for about 10 days afterwards. So it probably wasn't until about the 10th of January looking at our data. So given that there's a, a lag time between when that starts to drop uh, and when people go into hospital or uh, go into intensive care, that's probably why we haven't yet seen a major drop in, in deaths. The, the good news about the, the dropping rates is because of a lot of the um, fuss being made about these new variants, the so-called Kent variant or the South African variant, and we've got to bear in mind that although there's some evidence that uh, they increase the rate of transmission, um, we don't believe they necessarily lead to more deaths or more complications. Uh, there's no evidence for that. And the same simple measures that deal with the other variants we've had also work. So this, this really means that we should still stay focused on uh, social distancing and uh, washing your hands, mask wearing, etc., as well as um, clearly self-isolating when you first get the disease. And this is something that keeps getting missed out by the media. People forget that um, still there's a large proportion of people, even when they get a positive test, are not self-isolating properly, perhaps because they've got financial problems. But also there are 30% of people with the early symptoms of the virus that uh, unless they're using our app are not allowed to get a test and this is really wrong and these are the symptoms you get in the first three days so we're talking about headache and fee and fatigue which occur in 80 percent of people uh, with the virus and often the very first signs you might sort of get, also get sore throat we're seeing increasingly runny nose uh, is coming in at this time of year, but can now be a symptom of COVID, whereas before uh, it probably wasn't. So generally, we're looking at good news this week, steady progress. We're now at rates of infection that were similar to ones we had at the end of November, when, uh, if you remember, we, we came out of that second lockdown, Difference now is our hospitals are much more crowded and, this, and NHS is overstressed. But I think we can now be looking at uh, coming out. What are, how can we relax some of these restrictions? And personally, I'd like to see uh, much more focus on getting uh, schools back and teachers vaccinated and getting our, our children educated as, as a priority as we move forward. Stay safe. Keep logging. Thanks for your support.